getting into the top NFL DFS prize picks bets for the week. So one thing I always try to do is to make sure that I don't have any of the noise from like really anyone else, like getting to my thought process for the week. And that is exactly what happened with this first bet that I'm recommending is Isaiah Pacheco over 47 and a half rushing yards. Okay. And it's just a lot of people keep saying it. And I like the points that they made uh, pretty much the summary of it is that he has looked good <laughs> is really what it is. Um, the issue that I have are the snap counts, the percent of snaps that he's playing, but that hasn't really mattered too much. You know, he's been getting 12, eight, nine, 14, 15 rushing attempts, and, and he has just been really productive. Uh, we can see the rushing yards have been over this in basically every single game recently, um, and so it's tough really not to like this bet, even against Cincinnati the last time they played, 66. So I've definitely come around to it, and you look at the one game in which he didn't was Denver, and Denver has just been a good defense really this whole season, okay? So I do think it makes logical sense. So I'd be perfectly fine betting the over here. If we are betting the over here, though, it's somewhat what feels like we should be making another bet associated with this one as well. So P. Ryan and Mixon have been essentially just splitting the workload uh, quite a bit this season, especially lately. So if we are betting Pacheco to have a really good game uh, rushing the football, then we are kind of saying that the game script is going to be more in favor of the Chiefs being ahead or having it close. If the Chiefs are going to be ahead in this game, that would mean that P. Ryan would need to be on the field a little bit more because they're going to need to pass the ball a little bit more. The Bengals are going to need to. So if that happens, we can project P. Ryan to get around maybe, let's just say, three targets and maybe can turn three targets into uh, 31 rush or receiving yards and three receptions you know, to get that over. And so I do think it's one that would correlate together. So if you were looking for a potential stack and obviously prize picks you need to do, um, can't load up on the same team, this could be a way in which you would want to do that. It is one to me that correlates. And so you could also run it back the other way. And what I would mean by that, and I don't love this one as much, just giving his uh, fantasy point projection would be that you would do McKinnon over fantasy points at 11. And then you could also potentially do Mixon over fantasy points at 15, just given the fact that if Mixon's going off. That's going to mean that McKinnon's going to be on the field more because it's going to be much more of a pass heavy script for the Chiefs. But really, the bet we're focusing on there is going to be the P Ryan over. Oh, and I, it says six fantasy points. I apologize. Oh, no, that is fantasy points for P Ryan. We'd be looking at the rushing yards for Pacheco. And that's currently favored at minus 135. Pacheco to get over 47 and a half rushing yards. So, one prop that I think I like is going to be AJ Brown. Um, over five receptions. And really, I think that this one has a strong chance to just be a push. Okay, you look at that game against the New York Giants last week. They didn't need to throw the football. Thus, he didn't need them any reception. Uh, the previous game against the Giants, Jalen Hurts was still a little bit banged up. Like, I don't really care about that one. And it's not like the targets haven't been there. The targets have been there. 10 targets, nine targets, eight targets. So like the targets have been there. And so really what I'm betting on is that the targets are going to continue to be there for him. And thus the receptions should start to be there for him. And if we look at back like earlier on this season, he had been consistently getting two five receptions. And so given the fact that he just hasn't been at five receptions in quite a bit, you know, three straight games. To me, I kind of want to use the positive regression that he's going to be able to get over that. So I wouldn't say that this bet is going to exactly correlate well with AJ Brown having a good game, but I also do like Dallas Goddard over four and a half receptions as well. Um, the biggest issue would be if you look at his games prior to him being banged up, you know, it was around three receptions, but he is also someone that really demands a pretty good target share, you know, six to uh, let's just say around six targets. And so really we're betting on that the six or so targets that he gets are going to be quality targets. And thus you'll be able to get the over here. This is much more tight. I don't love this one as much, but if you didn't agree with the AJ Brown one, then this would be one that you agree with. And so the two Eagles ones uh, and the next one are going to be ones that you could make. To me, I see them being over, but that's more of a personal feeling. And then the next ones are just going to be more logical ones. So let me get into this last one here. So to me, kind of, I think the most likely outcome is going to be that the Eagles are going to be playing with the lead. You know, I would say I would probably favor them a little bit more than Vegas is, but this Niners team has been pretty phenomenal. If that does occur, and this would also be kind of chasing the game script, but I think the game script would match up pretty well. I would say George Kittle has a great chance to at least, you know, hit four receptions, but I would want to bet the over because if the game script does favor the Niners playing from behind a little bit more, I think we are going to see George Kittle then be more involved in the offensive game flow. And really, since Brock Purdy has taken over at 
quarterback, we have seen George Kittle be much more involved in the offense, getting a ton of targets. The thing with it is, it's basically in every game they've been playing with the lead. So they haven't really needed to rely on him too much. They haven't had to overextend their passing game too much. So really, that would be the bet here, is that you are betting on the Eagles being ahead, thus needing to throw the football more, thus someone like George Kittle can get over for reception. So if you guys are saying, no, I think the Niners are going to win, do not make this bet. Okay, I'm perfectly fine with that. And now we're going to get into a couple of sneaky bets. And I, I like these bets. They did pretty well last week. So I don't mind a bet like this. Um, Zach Pasquale over 0.5 fantasy points, because really what we are betting on here is a playing time. And lately we have seen Pasquale get um, some more playing time. Last week, he actually had more snaps than Quez Watkins. Pasquale is more of a possession receiver. So it wouldn't be shocking to see Pasquale actually get more work. So what we'd be betting on is literally one catch here. Can Zach Pasquale playing about 30% of the snaps get one catch? That's for you guys to decide. I just like the fact that it's really a simple bet. It's will he play 30% of the snaps? If so, will he get a catch? You know, I personally like those ones a lot. And then basically a very similar one would be Mitchell Wilcox over 0.5 fantasy points. So he had been someone that had been benefiting with Hayden Hurst out. Okay, so we look at the two Baltimore games, um, didn't record a catch. And so just want to point that out. They're not showing that here. Okay, but he still did play a decent amount of snaps in those games, just didn't have a target in here. So prize picks is making it look much more appealing than it is here. Okay, so they're, they're kind of trying to trap you here. But I do think there is a path in which he is just going to be on the field a little bit more than he had been. Um, you know, maybe 30 to 40% of the snaps, thus gets a chance to have a re reception. And so once again, you're, you're, you're just betting on, him being on the field and thus just getting one reception. This production right here was related to Hayden Hurst being out, just so you know. Okay, so another fantasy points one that I like is going to be looking at T. Higgins. Now, they do have his receiving yards set at 54 and a half and his reception set at 4.5. So already right there, they're kind of saying he has a good chance to get over or close to this fantasy score. But really what I see with this bet is the fact that, well, T. Higgins has been a little bit banged up. That's the biggest worry is the injury. But I would say given the fact that the last few games he hasn't been over this number, I feel like he has a good chance to really just go out and break the slate and that'd be more for like DraftKings or FanDuel for this I kind of I kind of wish we could raise it up a little bit more and so maybe this is a bet that you do maybe on DraftKings or FanDuel or BetMGM or you know one of those sports book where you you give them a few more and I guess you can't do fantasy score so that doesn't really make sense but I just feel like the chances of him like really destroying this projection are pretty great simply because the weakness in the Chiefs defense is definitely in the passing game so I like T Higgins over 12 and a half fantasy points and I guess if it wouldn't be him then it would be Tyler Boyd um so you could maybe make a bet like that as well if you if you want and so the last one here is going to be Juju less than 5.5 receptions now this would also be a better bet if we get news that hardman is going to be out or is going to be active and we get news that uh, justin watson is also going to be active because that just means there's more mouths to feed in that receiving corps you got um juju and you have mvs Sky Moore, Tony, um, you would have Watson, and then you would have Hardman. So it would just become more appealing. But we can see like Juju just has not been a focal point in this offense. It's actually kind of been the tight ends instead. And you could actually take a stab on a couple of the tight end props that are out there as well if you wanted to do that. I don't mind Juju's under targets just because he hasn't been involved in, in the offensive game plan lately. It's really been trying to find ways to get the ball into McKinnon's hands and also Kadarius Tony's hands Well, just forcing the football to Travis Kelsey and the other tight ends. So we can see that he has definitely taken a step back in the focal point of this offense. So to me, as long as the game stays close, not going to get the over targets like he hasn't gotten the last few games. And like, just continuing on with that, like in a couple of these matchups, Seattle, Las Vegas, and even Jacksonville, I know they're kind of playing with the lead. You would assume that he would have gotten more targets. You would assume that he would have been more involved in the game plan. And he just wasn't. And we have seen that happen. The snap counts are a little bit lower for him than they have been on the season as well because they are going with more tight ends. A lot more, just like 12 personnel, pretty much. And so for my bet of the slate, I guess we'll go, like I, these are all solid bets. A lot of them correlate pretty well. It does feel like we are somewhat forcing them. Like last week, we, we got some pretty good numbers. Two weeks ago, we got some pretty good numbers. This week, decent. But obviously these teams are the best teams in the league. The only poor defense is going to be the Chiefs, which obviously make the slate much more difficult to predict given the fact that we have a bunch of really good defenses so it's gonna be harder for the offenses to find where they want to attack defense thus we don't exactly know what their game plan is going to be but i'll go as isaiah pacheco over 47.5 rushing yards we have seen him continuously do that week in and week out the only game that he didn't was against denver uh, a game that you really wouldn't expect him to have a good game against really besides that really has been going off and getting this over and then just another one here like if you didn't want to do the targets you could do juju under four reception okay 
that's really just saying that if he gets 5.5 targets, that's saying that he's catching four, which, you know, I don't really see that happening either. So maybe you could do this one. We'll bet the under there. But this is the issue. Like we have two Chiefs here. And then lastly, I'll just go with Kittle because I think he has a great chance to at least get even here. If the game script goes more of the Niners having to throw the football a little bit more, I could see him getting the over here. But that's it for this video, guys. Um, if you didn't enjoy one of the bets, don't make them. If you actually strongly disagreed with one of them, you can bet the other way around it. Okay. That's kind of the nice part about this coverage. It doesn't seem like we're getting as many free squares as we were in the previous playoff weeks because, well, there's only four teams playing. It's much easier for the sports books to really adjust and be because there's only four games, people are able to really uh, bet a lot more. They're able to focus on a little bit more. Thus, the lines are going to be much more tight than we have been again in previous weeks. That's all I have for you guys for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give a like and subscribe. And as always, let's keep cashing.